de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome, welcome you and all to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast, where we talk about Latino everything. And today, awesome episode that we have for you. But before that, quick correction on our last episode. First of all, we want to apologize for the audio. <clears throat> we had a minor dilemma, Carlos. <clears throat> but we'll get that taken care of. Secondly, we have mentioned on the tequila episode that tequila might help with cancer. It's the opposite. Uh my information was bad, and I want to apologize, so sorry about that. But irrelevant to that, all the other stuff was on point, so thank you very much. And today we have an amazing episode because we have a young cumbia band that originated from Denton, Texas. They have played on many events all over the DFW, many venues. Also, at one time, they even got to open for Los Tigres del Norte that have played not only in Texas, but in Chicago, California, and uh, amazing that they're being uh, so young and doing so many things. We have Monica, Kevin, and Sacha, Sacha, the Sol de la Cumbia es DLK. Hello, how y'all doing? We have an yeah, audience. Yeah. Applauso. <laughs> they brought an audience. How y'all doing today? Good, how are you? Appreciate y'all coming out. Thank you. I know y'all all the way in Denton. And Pleasant Grove, so thank y'all for taking the time. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and start with a segment that I like to call Preguntas al Chile. Preguntas al Chile. If you have not subscribed Preguntas to the channel, check out these beautiful graphics that Carlos put together. Check them out. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Here we go. Y'all ready? We're going to start with Sasha, and we're going to make our way over there. You ready, Kevin? You're yes, really nervous. No, I'm really good. I'm good. Okay, here we go. Tacos or tortas? Um, I'll say tacos. Tacos. We good. Tortas. Tortas? Yes. Okay. Corn tortilla, flour tortilla? Um, Corn. Flour. Flour? Flour. Flour. Okay. Gorditas or sopes? Sopes. Sopes. Gorditas. Gorditas. <laughs> Jarritos or Fanta? Jarritos. <laughs> Jarritos. What flavor? Um, I like the pineapple one. ¿Y tú? Uh, Monica? The lime. Lime? Either the orange one or the fruit punch. Nobody said tamarindo. No. That's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> Agua de horchata, jamaica, or tamarindo? Um, I don't like none of those. You don't like none of the aguas? No. Or you like limonada better? Limon. Agua de limon. What about you? Horchata. Horchata? Horchata as well. Good time. Okay. Menudo, or salsa verde, salsa roja? Salsa roja. Salsa roja. Both. Both? <laughs> same both. time? Yeah, both. <laughs> same time? Both. I like spicy too. Menudo, pozole. 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 Both. I like both. At the both. same time. Oh, not, the, not the same time, but I like both I of like them. Both. But. That's good. That's good. We don't have to pick. I mean, even though it's one of this. Churros or flan? Mm, churros. That's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> I um, like sweets too. Uh, churros. Okay. Yeah, I go with churros too. Okay, when the hot sauce, Valentina, Tapatio, Cholula, Tabasco. Valentina. 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 Yeah, hands down, Valentina too. People would like Tabasco. Though. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised. And you know the little paletita candies? Uh, they sell. They have different var variety, but the ones that are corn, the sandia, the mango. Uh, the corn one. Uh, pass. You pass? Yeah, I don't, I I don't like, like can't pick. You don't like need it? No. I, I like the mango one. Like the mango, mango one. one. Okay. So when you hear the word Latino for you, Sasha, what comes to mind? Um, dang, uh, putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like an interview. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what we're going to um, do. <laughs> I just think of like. Like Latin music, Latin artists. I don't yeah. know. It's like the first thing that comes in my head. Absolutely. That's how you spread like culture. Yep. And it's not right or not wrong. So I just love to hear because that word is so big and it comes with a lot that I just like to hear what people comes to mind when you first hear. So Monica. Um. Yeah. Like I'm gonna piggyback off of such a culture. Yeah. Um. Beautiful, beautiful culture. Um. I love everything about being Latino. I mean. Any Latino brings to the table something different. Yeah. They bring every, something mm -hmm. different to the table. So True. True to that. So that's uh, a lot of variety in there. 
Yeah, I like that answer. What about yourself? Me? Well, just the food wise, they have different kinds of like picks <laughs> you can choose, varieties and um like as well the music, the culture. Yeah. They have every single have um like how do you say it? Um or well, their own style or like every yeah. Latin American has their own like style in their, sure. in their ways. Yeah, you're right. Cause uh, yeah, all of us uh, different from every single Latino country have their own yeah. cuisine, different styles and different things. Some of the ingredients are similar, but some of them are completely different. So I don't know if you ever had any type of different food, but I, I had, <laughs> I like food, mm-hmm. but but they're all different and they yeah. all have their own flavor. So, and it's crazy cause some people might just see it as the same, but it's not, it's really not. Okay, and do you mind uh, if they, you could call Latina? Do you care? Do you prefer, you know, Mexican American? I don't mind. I don't think it's nothing bad. Mm-hmm. What about yourself, Monique? Yeah, same. I don't mind. Yeah, that. I don't mind either. Awesome. Well, appreciate you very much. Okay, here we go. So, first question, just because I'm curious and I thought it was interesting, the way your name spells Sacha, why why is it spelled like that? Why well, is your name? Well, my name's spelled like that because uh-huh. my dad chose my name. Uh huh. And why? Uh, because he was in love with a news reporter from Channel Twenty Three, Sacha Prieto. Uh huh. So he decided to name me like that. I don't know if it was like a last minute thing because they thought I was gonna be a boy. My name was gonna be Joshua, but <laughs> your name I, was gonna be Joshua. Yeah, because I was supposed to be a boy, and then I came out a girl. How did you get it wrong? My mom never had an ultrasound done. So they were going based off how Latinos, how we be doing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like if the belly is yeah. higher or a drop, then it's going to be a girl boy. Yeah. Ah. So everything was boy clothes, but they had to like really? switch my name up last minute. That is crazy and funny. But it's some of the things for our culture, right? Yeah. Mexicanos, like they always try to guess que si la pancita está para arriba, it's going to be whatever, <laughs> yep. you know. Okay. So, Monica, you started the band way back in the days when you were young, but I don't remember, or I think I heard that you were in a band, a, pre- a previous band before. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what the name of the band is? Do you want to tell us? You don't really, uh, you forgot? Let's just say I forgot. Um, but yeah, I was in a, I started singing in a band at um, 11 years old, and uh, I was in that band for five years. Yeah. Um, I got out when I was um, 15, going on to 16. I'm not exactly sure mm-hmm. what age I was, but it, it was in 2016 when um, all of this started. 2016 is when all y'all started. But, okay, so tell me, walk me through the idea. So it didn't work out with that band. I want to forget their name. But you you have something in you that you just wanted to initiate uh, an actual band. So you, you, if I'm not mistaken, you had mentioned that you just started kind of like getting together and jamming out. And yeah, then- yeah, that was the idea at first because um, I had um, lots of other friends that played um, other instruments that weren't in that band or were in that band too, and we just like hang out at, at my house or their house and and just play, see what see what comes out, um, try something different, yeah, take out um, songs. You know, try it on our own because we never really like had the atten- intentions of starting a band, but our intentions of playing our own music by ourselves, taking songs out by ourselves, mm-hmm. they were there. So, do you remember the exact day or the time when you say, you know what, let's go ahead and do it? Uh, no, it's been too many years ago. September, October, yeah, around that time, yeah. So you just said, let's just let's just do it. We already playing. We already practice. Let's let's go ahead and just start doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, we weren't like um, professional. I'm gonna st- say that from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, we course. weren't. We were barely like starting out, <laughs> yeah. um, trying to learn how to play instruments. Um, we had well, two uh, of the other girls had dads that were that mu- were musicians, and they were helping us out. Um, we had another teacher help us out with with the piano and mm. uh, taking out certain songs, certain parts. Um, but it was just a whole community trying to come together and helping out these teenagers that want to start their own their own band. And if I'm not mistaken, most of y'all were girls at the time. Maybe there was like maybe one boy. Yeah, um, it was all all girls at the beginning, and then uh, we couldn't find a drummer, so we decided to. To call up 
um, one of our other friends that that stayed around the area that mm -hmm. to to come and help us out. Yeah, and yeah, he he helped us out for a while. That's pretty cool because I will touch up on all the other bands that you have mentioned because I think I know all their names. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. Uh, what about yourself, Sasha? When did you decide to plan? So if I'm not mistaken, you actually come from a musical family too, right? Yes, I yeah. do. And when did you decide to start playing? Um, I didn't really decide to start playing. It was more like my parents kind of wanted me to try something. Mm. They wanted me to try the accordion. I was around 13. And I didn't like it. But it kind of grew on me. I don't know. Like my music teacher, yeah. he like was talking to me, and he was telling me that he feels like it's in me. Like I just have to like kind of find where I fit in. And from thirteen, I just started playing, and I met them when I was fourteen, 14. and I got in the group. Yeah. How mm -hmm. was that? How was that conversation? Hey, you want to? Uh, well, actually, we needed um, a fill in. <laughs> person mm -hmm. because we didn't have somebody to the play congos the right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and well <laughs> we knew that she was um one of our friends musicians nieces mm. so if that makes sense I Escala, think right was... Escala de la Cumbia? no who was um, at that time Potencia Vallenata. Potencia Vallenata. her uncle well her uncle and her grandpa uh play in that band uh her uncle plays the accordion and her her grandpa plays the bass, and that's that's their band. Uh, but her uncle was like, "Hey, if you if you want to borrow my niece, she's there," and we were like, "Yeah, sure, just just bring her, <laughs> and we'll work something out. We'll we'll teach her in that in the spot if she doesn't mind." Yeah. And so that's how. And what will you do? And they just tell you, "Hey, come on, we're going somewhere. We're going uh, on a trip." I was so <laughs> nervous. Really? I, yes, I was told like two days before. My mom told me when I got home from, like, my dance practice, she was like, um, Luz, the manager, mm -hmm. um, she called and she asked if you can go play on Saturday. And my stomach dropped. And I was like, uh, I don't even know what, like, I don't listen to cumbias like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You were listening to Taylor Swift and all that. Yeah. Mistake, right? <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Taylor Swift. Sounds good, but still, not cumbia at all. Yeah. And then you just, what, you remember where you felt like besides your stomach dropping, your first gig? Um, I was. How'd you get through it, first of all? I, I was nervous. I was just trying to think, like, maybe I'm not even going to last, you know? It's just, we'll try it. Yeah, yeah. And I showed up, and they were all, like, very, they were, they were nice, but I was, I would always keep to myself. So it was kind of like, I was just nervous. New uh -huh. environment. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. But 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 you got you played and you got you got the gig done. Yes. Awesome. How long was the gig? About an yeah, I played for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I played for a good hour or so. No. When, when was oh, it? Mas. What was it? Where was it? Where? What was it? It was a birthday party outside. It was so cold. I remember. Yeah. I was cold. Yeah. I think it was like the full gig, which is uh, two sets of an hour and a half. Yeah. Three hours. Okay. So. We're good with the mic with Monica. Make sure we're good with it. Oh, sorry. Kind of far now. I just want to make sure we're good. A little bit closer? All right, we go. So that way we don't we'll miss none of that stuff. Yeah. We need pillows. I'm going to get pillows. Yeah, so I sure. know. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, Kevin, how did you um, get into the music business? Where, how, where did it they find was... you? I know you got lost getting over here. So it was the GPS <laughs> broken back in the days? Yeah. No, but it was either 2017 or 16 when they... Uh -huh. Started as well because I was gonna start playing the drums, but I didn't. It wasn't for me, so I went to the congas, mm -hmm. and that's where I started off playing. That's where it was at for you. Yeah. Well, did you come from a, a musical background? I mean, or no? No, I don't. I didn't. Never. Not that I know of, but like growing up, my brother did play um, at church, and he played the drums and the and the congas, and he actually sang too. But other than that, I don't think none of my family members ever played in the music group. So did your parents buy you a whole drum set or where did you start? Um, like well, back in the day, my brother had his, uh -huh. but I messed up all the heads with the hammer. <laughs> um, so I we sold the drums. We yeah. got an electric one and just with the electric drum yeah. set. And then the, the conga, where did that come from? Where did you learn it? There was a new instrument. Group? No, just by ear and just lessons from... Our teachers from yep. the group That's that dope. were teaching us. And then, do you remember your first gig? Yeah. Well, how, how did y'all find him, first of all? 
lost in his GPS again. Oh, no? <laughs> yeah. Was, he just showed up to my house one day. And he just showed up? Yeah. <laughs> Straight up? Yeah. But who, who brought him? Who took him over there? Uh, the other accordion player uh, that we had like so, before so, Sacha. So, yeah, I needed a, a Congo player. A con- uh, yeah. Congo? Congo? Well, yeah, they needed a drummer Congo. player, yeah, but... A drummer. A drummer. But um, I didn't work out as a drummer. With the drummer, yeah. And then he just showed up. Yeah, that's freaking funny. That's (laughs) dope, though. Okay, so besides, uh, so you did grow up with music. Like you're been musical since like you were little, Monica, right? Mm -hmm. Like your whole like your dad's been on bands. He's been. Um, if you were telling me he was one of the longest musicians playing within your family, correct? Uh, yeah, within my family and um. Within the band, uh, shout out to Maestro, which is our other, our other. Uh, Who's Maestro? Maestro is Aurelio Quiroz. He's um, the dad of our current timbalero slash drummer. Okay, and the, is he part of a current band right now, or he just knows yeah, how to play? Yeah, they play with Scala de Cumbia. So he's Scala shout de Scala. Cumbia. Yeah. Shout out to Scala. Okay, and uh, how come? Like, I ask that question later because I think it's funny. So in two thousand and uh, tell me about the name. So I know that Sol de la Cumbia is because of the the G G note, which is the Sol or Sol Mayor, and it's very crucial within like cumbias to have Sol. And then I seen the spelling different of cumbia. Can you kind of sort of tell me the story of the name? I know you were kind of brainstorming. Somebody said that, and then it just became what it was. But can you share the story with me? Um. Well, we went now, if through, I can like, have you closer to we the went, mic, sorry about sorry. that. Sorry. We went through like um a bunch of different names and none of them really were like like stuck. What were at the names? All. Um we first thought of uh Cumbia All Stars, which Somebody was, has that name. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody already has that name. Somebody has that name, yeah. but since our our people came from Los Combers, shout out to Los Combers. Um we were like kind of along the lines, but we were like, no, nah, we don't want to do something that's already been done and then later we found out that there's other mm-hmm. bands with that name or dance groups i think that they have that name something i know oh. Cumbia the all-stars around yeah somewhere. yeah yeah for sure. um and then we were like we want something that sticks but also is like uh music related something that um people are gonna catch on to easily yeah and so uh sol de la cumbia came to be <laughs> Was there any other names besides them? All stars? Any other uh, ones? Like- All stars. Um, we were gonna be Los Juniors de la Cumbia because again, all of them are well, yeah, juniors. From, yeah, they're all they all play in bands. Well, um, most of the family members of the beginning so de la Cumbia were were musicians. So we came from musicians. Yeah, but it wouldn't go because a lot of you were girls and juniors mm. usually boys. Yeah, so that wouldn't usually. go. Y otro nombre? Any other name? Um, I'm trying to think of another one. I'm surprised that you remember because you said they didn't stick, but now they're kind of yeah. Sticking. I mean, they weren't like like really really good. They were in the mm-hmm. works. Yeah, yeah. Names, and um, what's another one? I can't. I can't. It's all good, at the and I like the way y'all incorporate the note. With the soul, which is part of Yas logo, mm-hmm. or I think it still is. So in the beginning it was, but I know I've seen it, right? Yeah, which the is pretty class. awesome. Mm-hmm. And then was there a little confusing with people thinking it was regarding the actual sun, soul, and not the actual note? All the time. All the time. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, <laughs> to be honest, if I wasn't because I heard you on an interview and then I looked it up, I Google like, what is that? How important is this soul? And what is that? Oh, the G note. I don't know about music, but I know it must be a note. And then the sol, oh, it's sol mayor, oh, I see. And then it's very crucial within cumbia. Like it's one of the main things that you have to have. That sometimes they play in the off key, sometimes it's whatever. And it's all Google that I'm saying. I don't know yeah. anything. But it's pretty cool though how how y'all broke it down and how it came to be y'all. Okay, so tell me about the cumbia. So I seen on projects that it's with a C and then on Twitter, but then sometimes it's with a K. What is the variance or what does it change or what does it mean? Um, I honestly don't know, but, uh, the K just adds like a, like a style to it, to how it looks basically. Yeah. I think it's more of a newer wave type of spelling también Mm -hmm. because y'all are younger. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool too. I just, I just thought maybe there was more deeper significance than like, Yeah, I wish I I could give you more, but no. Nah, this is for like, 
whenever we're doing this type of sound, you know. But <laughs> this is like, but no, we got, that's pretty cool though that y'all do that. Okay, so the so I only have y'all in the, here, but how many members total is there right now currently? Nine. Nine. Nine of them. Can you tell me who they are and what instruments they play? First of all, let's go on y'all. Y'all play different instruments. So what do you play? Um, I play the accordion and the guitar. Dang. What about yourself? Uh, I sing, but mm -hmm. I also kind of play the bass. The bass. Mm -hmm. Even though you have little hands. And little hands. Any but, but I still, yeah. I tried it before. My hands were way, my fingers were way too short. So I feel your pain. Oh, yeah. But you get it done, though. I, I cut it. What I play yourself? the congas and the drums. Okay, and then the members we have, the other six members, who do we who we have missing? The other six members is, uh, we got two saxophone players, mm -hmm. uh, Edgar and Moreno. That's how they play the saxophone uh -huh. the most? Okay. Uh, we call him, his name is Jose Moreno, but we call him Moreno. Moreno. Um, and then we have uh, Chiquilin, which is our drummer, um, Adrian Quiroz, uh, which is our timbalero. And Aurelio Quiroz, which is our piano player. Mm -hmm. And also uh, my dad, Rafael. Uh, he also plays the piano, but he's our sound engineer, engineer most of the time. Yeah. Um, Julian, our bass Julian, player. Julian, our bass player. Uh, and you have the manager, Luz. Our manager, manager Luz. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, Luz. do any of them play any other instruments besides that? Besides the ones that um, they usually have? Julian them? plays everything. Yeah. Yeah. He's our yeah. little uh, special dance around. kids. Yeah. Really? yeah, if we're missing a piano player, he hops on, or if we need a guitar player, he hops on. You know what trips me out? Because you are not the first band that I had, not cumbia, but other type of music. But it's crazy that like, once you all know an instrument, it kind of sort of is not, I'm saying it's easy, but it's easier to adapt to different, like, different instruments. And that's like, even as young as you are, it's tribute to me that it's just, so easy for you to do that. I'm telling you, I try the guitar. I'm like, like, oh God, I think I can get it down. I'm like, I think I can do it. Now. But I never tried it. But I'm like, man, it's trippy how you are talented like that. And it's, but it, like from the beginning, when you were young, when you were chiquita, do you remember any stories when you were young about music, being oh, around music? Um, yeah, I've only sang ever since I was five years. Well, I learned how to sing before I learned how to talk, basically. You did? Uh, yeah. You have videos? Um, Is no. there videos out there? No? Maybe maybe from like a long time ago in YouTube. We need them, oh, we need them to have them on. Uh, from Monica. YouTube. Uh, being a contestant in, in one of those singing competitions. Really? I have no idea. I haven't <laughs> I haven't searched. I hope not. But maybe Damn, there's I a video somewhere out there. I to bother looking for your name. Yeah. <laughs> you would have found something. Um, but yeah, I started playing the bass at 16, right when we started this whole project. But even younger before, do you remember, because your dad was in music, just kind of being around that environment Oh, oh at all? yeah, always going with my dad to all of his gigs, most of his gigs, most the ones that I, he could take me to, yeah. Yeah, because he couldn't take you to the clubs. I remember staying in the van sometimes, you know, with my mom. For real? Mm -hmm. That's pretty crazy. Damn. Okay, I have a, a further question later on about that because I think it's important. Okay, so in 2017, you were kind of sort of a little bit in, a, maybe less than a year, you did JB Customs Lowrider Expo at Fair Park. That was one of the, uh, the biggest performances that you had at that time. Hello, we are quickly jumping in to let you know we are hope that you are enjoying the episode. Make sure you hit the subscription, notification, and thank you very much. And now back to the podcast. Remember that one? Yes. How did it feel? It, it it had to be the biggest as far as audience or no? It was the biggest in um, event and venue. Um, the people, well, there were people outside and inside, mm -hmm. which is kind of like um, you couldn't really get a full view of everybody that was there because people were either staying or going out there and people were just there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I remember that place being um, full, fullish, yeah. outside and inside. Uh, but we we played with another band. I can't remember the name of them. Um, it was a Tejano band, right? Yeah. Uh huh. I don't remember. And then uh, it was, there I think was, it was another Los one. Chamacos, I think it was. Yeah, they were, and they were kind of like trending. We we played with like yeah. kind of trending um, bands at, at that moment. So for us to have an event like that was was pretty big for us. That's pretty cool though. And do you remember the feeling of being there at that time, like being like one of the biggest events that you had up to that point? Uh, 
I know you were nervous, even though you didn't want to, because yeah. even in the interview, you were nervous. Yeah, I was I was pretty nervous, like, still at the beginning of of this whole project. I, I would get pretty nervous, because I was... Let me get you closer to the mic. Sorry, I just want to make sure I get everything. Okay, yeah. Um, at the beginning, uh, I, I did get pretty nervous. I don't get that nervous anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some special events that I, where I do get nervous. And it's, some people say that it's okay, like for people that get nervous, they said it's okay to get nervous because it shows that you care. Mm -hmm. Like if you didn't care, then it yeah, wouldn't matter anymore, right? You want to give your best yeah, every course. every gig. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. You just want to give give your best to how, people. How, besides that being nervous, once you started going, how did that feel as far as like be practicing for like maybe a year and now you're actually in a stage and there's more people than maybe you've seen before? How did that, um, how did that feel? It's still very nerve wracking. <laughs> it's it's just crazy to think about how you can get on stage and, and forget that there's a bunch of people in front of you or you get on stage, you're nervous at first, but then it just all goes away. So the practice, mm -hmm. so the practice, you just go into muscle memory and just getting it, get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all do a great job. I watched y'all a few times perform. Sometimes I don't say nothing, I just be checking y'all out because cause, y'all do enjoy the show that y'all put on. What The ones that I've seen, and of course, uh, I think most recently I've seen y'all not that long ago. What about you? Besides the house party, once you actually, when did you decide to actually to let you do the accordion? When did that happen? I think it was like a year into me being in the group. I, so the whole time you were playing the conga at that time? No. <laughs> so what were you doing? Uh, the weedle and the guitar. Uh. Yeah, but I think it was like about a year into me being in the group. Um, like the spot opened up. And I was more than happy to do it because it was my main instrument. Um, Even though you didn't like it at one time. I, I, I mean, it grew <laughs> on me. <laughs> so, yeah, I got the chance and I took it. Yeah. yeah. And how you remember your first gig with the accordion? Yeah, it was on New Year's Eve, actually. What year? Tw 2020. 2020. 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. That's right after the pandemic, so everybody uh -huh. was eager to watch anything live because yeah. we've been locked up for. Right. Some people were still locked up at that time, yeah. so you, how how did you feel? Nervous? Happy that you actually got to play the instrument? I, I was nervous because uh -huh. I always get nervous when I play. Still to this day, um, because I I'm scared of like forgetting and then like I overthink and then I just mess up everything else. Um, but I was really nervous that time because I had learned all the songs like. That same week. The same week? For yes. Real? Yes, because it was kind of, I was expecting it already, but I wasn't that yeah. quick. Yeah. So it just kind of caught me by surprise, and I learned all those songs that to fill, I think it was like two hours set. Two hours. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy that you learned it in two weeks, and first just like, but it was the instrument you wanted to, so, yeah. you know, it was pretty cool. And tu, Kevin, when yes. was it that they let um, you actually play, play, play? Play, play? Well, this, <laughs> um, I forgot it, but God, dude. I didn't actually gig. I forgot, but I, I remember I played, but I forgot the tocada. I just, was it the conga or was it something different? No, it was different? the congas, yeah? but it was the... Wasn't it in Trader's Village? No, it wasn't in Trader's Village. I remember because I was struggling. Yeah. I was struggling that day. So I, rem I remember. That. How do you recover whenever you feel like you're there and you just keep messing up? And then, like, and that's for, for all y'all. Because uh -huh. I, I MC like clubs and, and stuff like that. And sometimes I'm, maybe I messed up a couple of uh, wedding <laughs> ceremonies. Distracted stuff. And like, things happen. Yeah, you yeah, jump over happen. a name. And of course, you have to, you know, keep pick on. it up and not get in a. Like they call it like a sand trap where you just keep just messing that up <laughs> instead of you just have to like okay that happened is over. Happened but how do y'all do it? Whenever like for example yourself, I'm accordion. I don't know if it went smoothly, but if you messed up, how do you recover? Well, like my teacher, my music teacher had told me uh -huh. like nobody is gonna only the musicians are really gonna notice all the little details. That's true. But other than that, like the public isn't gonna realize. So just play it off. Don't make a face. You know, you're fine. The world is not ending. You know. What about y'all? Same thing. Oh, or how do God. you play it? Off? It's kind of harder for you, Monica, because you're yeah. singing the lyrics 
Unless you freeze. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, no. Yeah, I gotta tell me that story because something that happened. Okay. okay. The the many many times that I've uh-huh. forgotten the lyrics. Uh-huh. This one time, I will never forget, and I will always like be in in like shock that I actually did this. Um, I came. We were playing a, a song <laughs> that we had recorded that uh-huh. we had recorded uh-huh. already. That song, we've been playing it for like a good three years. Yes. I'm solid on that song, okay? We took out another song for the new album that we're working on. That's like in the same key. Everything's the same except for the lyrics, the lyrics. and the way that the music goes, mm-hmm. okay? So we're playing that first song that we had played for three years. Uh, it's called Estás Fuera Mi Vida. Mm-hmm. And um, they play it and everything. I'm chilling. I'm looking at the audience. I'm doing my thing. The time comes for me to come in with the song, and I come in with the new song's lyrics over the old song. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> I can see. I can see the confusion, though. You know. Okay, uh, the you, wire, you understand the my crust? confusion, but uh-huh. it shouldn't have happened. And when I did that, blank, blank face, blank everything. I didn't know what had happened, and I was looking around like, what did I just do? <laughs> So was the, was the band still playing and kind of everybody was still playing and they were. And just, what were you doing? I was trying to figure out where the lyrics came in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying That's to figure crazy. out where they were and what uh-huh. were the lyrics. Cause like at that moment I was just so like in shock and and blank. Like I my brain farted. Yeah, <laughs> it was I just, know what you mean. And then how did you recover from that one? Uh, the song kept going and I came in on the next part. On the next part. Yeah. So you just let them dance. And then, yeah, cause you're really was, good at hyping the crowd out, uh, like, you know, because I know about the MC in part. It's, you know, just getting them going. So you're good at that. So did you just do that or you just kind of dance? I just kind of dance this while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but still, the audience wouldn't know unless they know the song song. And you just, like you say, you just got to play it off. Yeah. What about yourself? Um, what, was, what was a, a mess up, mess up that you remember? Mess up, mess yeah. up. Um. Well, you can tell whenever I mess up because I have to go with the, well, not melody, but with the percussionist. Uh-huh. So if I mess up, they'll look at me and I, I know I messed up. I just pause for a little bit and then I'll go again. Yeah. You but know what? I, I laugh at myself every time I mess up, though, because I know I shouldn't, but I do anyway. Yeah. You know what trips me out? Because I've seen it whenever I'm in gigs, like grupos, different grupos. Y'all be having a whole conversation in stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be like, hey, uh, you seen a new spot? Like, see, and then you just keep playing, and everybody doesn't know nothing. I, mean, I do that all the time, you know? that. Yeah. Yes, have full conversations, and I just be playing. I'm like, how the hell do y'all do it? Because I'll be have to focus. I'll be have to, like, I can't chew gum, talk on the phone, and walk at the same time. <laughs> I, I'd probably trip or something. So, to y'all be able to do that, and you be able to still focus and know what you're doing. Dang. But... Even though you mess up sometimes. Maybe that's what happened. You was chewing gum that day. <laughs> okay, so from going to that per- the first the first performance you did, 2017, which was one of your biggest one, to now, most recently, not that long ago, you opened for you opened up for Los Tigres del Norte. That's a big jump. Mm-hmm. How's that? Yeah. How does that feel? When's, when's your new year we're going to open up for them? Um, the Tigres del Norte game was like two years ago. Two years ago? Three years ago. Uh-huh. Three years ago. Um, so 2019. 2019. That was before pandemic. Yeah. Before everything yeah. closed down and yeah. everything. Um, we were we were cold. That's for sure because it was outside. Um, what was it? At? It was at a Jaripeo Rancho. Was it over there by uh, Ferris? Or lejos. Um, Waco. 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 Mm-hmm. It was uh, a yeah. Uh, Waco, I couldn't Texas. remember. <laughs> But it was at a rancho, and um, they were going to have us, uh-huh. um, a banda. I can't remember the banda's name. La Sonora Dinamita, uh, which has a lot of originators from the original Sonora yeah, Dinamita. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Los Tigres del Norte. Mm-hmm. And um, it was Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we were we were all there, hungry, cold, waiting for, in the mud, because it, it had rained the day before. So Dang. we were in the mud. So it wasn't a good start to the day, but when the time came that we played and we got to stay backstage to see La Sonora Dinamita and Los Tigres del Norte, it was just a, a really good experience. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, how was it the news whenever y'all knew that you were going to for sure confirm that y'all were going to play for sure the Tigres confirmed. in the same stage? Uh, yeah, I know how big the Tigres are. Yeah, County. yeah, it was it was definitely like a shock because how, how are we going to open up for Los Tigres del Norte from one day to another and like be okay with that? Like, that's yeah, crazy. yeah. That that one was was crazy for us, but it was it was a good it was a good gig. Well, yeah, all of them for that gig or no? Oh, uh, I think you it was just Sacha. It was yeah. Sacha, just you me were there. Sacha. You missed it. Bro. I did. <laughs> stick, I did miss stick it. Stick around for the next one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what other groups uh, groups have y'all opened up? Because y'all opened up. This is one of the biggest ones, which I think is like the biggest. The biggest. But I know y'all have opened up a whole lot of different acts. Uh, can you name some of them? Um, we recently opened up for Grupo Control. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, Energy boys. we've opened up for La Energia Norteña, La, uh, La Maquinaria Norteña, also. Hey. Um, no, we know La Fiera de Ginaga, my bad. I was my like, bad. where did I, <laughs> when, like, was I not here? <laughs> Where's the other one that we played, like, out of town? It was, like, at a fair, too, and it was going to rain in Louisiana, but it didn't uh, rain. That's the, any, La Reunión no, Norteña. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Them, so yeah. all of them, y'all got to open up for. And there's just a few. I'm pretty sure y'all missed some, but that's... Mm. Yeah. How does that feel to know that y'all be able to, like, get get to do that yet? You know, because y'all, y'all still young. Y'all been doing it for some time. And, uh, you know, of course, y'all getting gigs and, and yeah, you know, monetizing off of But still, you know, just being able to, to share the stage with people that, like, a bunch of people that people know. How does that feel? Uh, it's still... It's still really crazy because uh, La Fiera de Ginaga, well, Sacha, she got to play with them. So you, they brought you in the stage. Yeah. I mean, in, with them, with their set. Yes. Really? How did that feel? It was amazing because well, I'm a big fan. How did it happen? First of all, how did they? No, you're not. You're a Taylor Swift fan. Don't front. <laughs> <laughs> Don't front. But how did that happen? Um, well, uh, the manager she knows that I'm a really big fan of like Norteñas with sax mm-hmm. groups. Oh yeah, you are. You are. You are. <laughs> so she. Asked them if they could give me the opportunity to play a song with them, and when they gave her like the yes, I was I got nervous, and there was like a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. That place was I was shaky, um, but I managed to get through it. Yeah, yeah. So they give you like a big announcement, and they they introduce you and everything, or they just have you go in there and just start playing. I don't even remember. I just remember walking up. Yeah, right now. she was so nervous, <laughs> but yeah, she they did introduce her and everything. Um, and it's it's cool that we get to have those experiences. Yeah, not a lot of people cool. get to have those those opportunities. Yeah. We also played with um, Junior Clan. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't always play with Grupo Norteño. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. Diverse and and, and yeah, can because yeah, do have that Wapango, and we talk about that here a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, that give a variety of people mm-hmm. to dance mm-hmm. and keep it entertained, which that's what people are looking for. And, and of course, paying for it at the mm-hmm. end of the day. Okay, so y'all have a project, but y'all have different type of songs that I've seen. So you have Yamado de, de Cumbia. What is that? Is that was just a single or was that a whole project? That was a single. That was uh, a single. A preview of the album that was going to come out later Okay, on. which was Vamos a Bailar. Mm-hmm. And that was distributed by AG Super Music Group, which is, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're Los Gran Reyes. They, yes. They're the ones that do that. Shout out to Los Gran Reyes. Shout out to them. <laughs> Huh. So, uh, how did that project? Co- th- does the project include all original songs, or some of them are covers? Oh, you have them. We here. have them. <laughs> you see? Um, they are covers this and original right songs. Um, okay, so we have real quickly. I'm gonna read, uh, read the the names. Cumbia, Wepae, mm-hmm. and that one's original. Um, given to us by our friend Dani Zapata. Okay. By Baila y Menea, and that's your dad mm-hmm. who wrote that one. La Broma, Barry Robin, and uh, Maury Gibbs. Is that a cover? It's a cover. Okay. Corazoncito, Ricardo Guzman. That's cover. a cover también. Mm-hmm. El Peligro de Extinción, Fabian Pacheco. Is that a cover también? Cover. Mm-hmm. Llamado de Cumbia. That one's from uh, Los Gran Reyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Give another, it to us. <laughs> some of this stuff. Te Invito a Bailar. That's another cover. John uh, Farrar. Mm-hmm. Cumbia de las Cumbias. D-A-R. Is it a means cover? Cover, yeah. 
Esta, estás fuera de mi vida. That's an original one. And you actually even did a video in, um, remind me of the place, not Corpus Christi, um, Galveston. Galveston. You went and shot a video at Galveston. We'll talk about that here shortly. That's the original también. Y el regalo de amor, también the original. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So how long did it take you to get this project together? And it, this was in 2019 or 20. 2019 it was released. Mm -hmm. Uh... We took a while, maybe about six months, mm -hmm. because we were barely learning how to get all the instruments right and record and um, get the publishing done and yeah. everything. Yeah. And then uh, you, you recorded at the uh, Con Los Gran Reyes, mm -hmm. Agustin, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to, to the homies. Shout, we out, had to him on the Shout out to AG. Yeah, we had him on the podcast uh, a long time ago. We need, a new, we need an update interview, homies. But yeah, that's pretty awesome. And how did it feel to actually have, like, look, this is like a project. And it's on Spotify and all that. And so how did it feel? It felt crazy because I, I never thought that we would get to this point where we had um, an album to, like, show people, hey, this is the music that we got. This is the music that that we that we can bring to y'all. Does, does it make you feel more relevant whenever you have something that you can show people? Because I remember mm -hmm. the interviews, they ask you, and some of the things, like, we don't have anything right now. We have yeah. our YouTube, but now... Now we have a full project that we can show people. Like, we recorded this, and this is the music that we that we offer. And exclusive. They have another project, another studio album. So that one's going to be released in February sometime. The interview is going to be aired on February. But you have another project, a new project coming out, correct? Mm -hmm. And that's on February? Yeah, um, February 10th is the release date. It's about roughly about that time. What is the name of the project? The name of the project is uh, Y Te Llego El Sabor, which is another slogan that my dad made for us. Y Te Llego El Sabor? Mm -hmm. And how many of those are, how many songs total on that one? Eight, eight, nine. Eight or nine. So, the, 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 the I, can't, I can't remember, but it's eight or nine. Okay. One of those two. Y, y son originales or they're uh, covers también? Original or and covers. Original and covers? Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have the artwork for that, but if y'all get it to me beforehand or the link already, we'll make sure we add it in the description of the interview. So how, how long did that one, that, that uh, particular project take to, to be done? That one, it took a month to get it recorded and almost a full year to get it in uh, to production. Album cover, um, album, everything. Yeah, yeah. Get it uh, also mastered because we didn't have our, our, our music mixed yet. So we just got um, into the studio, started recording it, and then uh, gave it to our, um, our label that was uh, in charge of uh, mastering it and, and doing the publishing. So they're the mastering, and I'm sorry, who, what label are you currently with, if you don't mind me? We are currently with Yes Music. Mm -hmm. And they have some history, right? Tell yeah. Tell me about who, who they've been with or who they have under there. Uh, they have a lot of uh, cumbia grupos. They mm -hmm. have Yajari, uh, Masoro. They Sonido Master. also have Sonido Master. Oh, nice. Um, and lots of other um, groups that are, like, Houston-based or, or uh, Coahuila-based. Oh, that mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yas family is from La Ciudad de Mexico, verdad? Mm -hmm. This is your family solamente? And mm -hmm. what about yours? Uh, my dad's from San Luis Potosí and my mom is from Toluca. Saludos a San Luis Potosí, Toluca. And what about <laughs> yourself? Um, my dad's from Pencamo, Guanajuato. Mm -hmm. And my mom's from La Piedad, Michoacán. Orale. Saludos a Michoacán también. Okay, so... Ha, tell me about the 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 song that you recorded the Galveston que fue la estás fuera de mi vida. <laughs> so I I heard a little bit about the interviews. It was first it was long, then it was super cold at night, yes. and then it was super hot at night. And then some of the people when y'all were recording, they were in the back, like getting kind of like <laughs> I was like quítense or dance, and then at least they were trying to dance a little bit. So tell me about that experience or that video. That that's the uh, second video that y'all have like. As far as music video, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how'd that go? Um, well, yeah, it was um, very wet, cold, windy, lots of sand. When was it that y'all go and, and film it? Uh, About what time frame? Like, okay, when winter time? It was March. 
I think. April, March. It was in May. May. Yeah. May. Of 2020. And it was still cold todavía? Mm -hmm. Well, over there, the wind was blowing pretty hard. Yeah, you remember? Yeah. So what was it like whenever y'all were recording? Because like, people would be people, right? They're just those just watching y'all. How did that feel whenever y'all were getting recorded? Kind of awkward because the yeah. music was like on a little speaker little at speaker? one point. Oh, yeah. And we were just, <laughs> we're just passing by just looking at us and we were just like. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And then uh, at, in the daytime, same thing. But that time it was hot. Mm -hmm. How hot was it? Um, Texas is Texas, though. It right. was hot and uh, very sticky. We had a lot of sand stuck to us. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Man, sand is, man, sand is, it gets everywhere. Oh. You'll be surprised where you find sand. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then, of course, the uh, the other one, you have another video, because cumbia, no sé por qué me no me sale la palabra, huepae. And that one, was that one before uh, the, that one, the uh, previous one, or was it after? Yeah, that was uh, before Estás Fuera Mi Vida. Yeah, y como, how does that song come about in the video itself? Um, well, we first needed something to, like, present ourselves with, like, mm. professionally. We have this music video on YouTube um, just to put out one of our, one of our um, songs that we had recorded because we had recorded a few songs before the actual album, but they weren't like professionally recorded. They were just something that we had um, a friend do for us so we could present something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's pretty cool though. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, but now you have this though. Yeah. <laughs> you have another one coming in February. Watch out. Y'all coming a long way. Sometimes it feel like it just, it feel like you're just not moving quick enough, but you know, it just takes steps, but y'all are making progress. Y'all definitely are, again. All the way from Tigres to having your own thing to where you're happy to show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I was happy to give you all my stickers because I think they look pretty cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Presentation, though. But it shows you professionalism. And I know Luz is about that. Yeah. I mean, you just, you have to be. You have to take it seriously. This yeah. is what you're going to be doing, right? If you if you want a good outcome, you're, you're definitely going to have to um, put in your effort, put in harder yeah. work, dedication. Uh, you gotta be determined. You gotta, you gotta be, um, I don't know, a hundred percent. Because if not, if you're doing stuff halfway, you're not. You have to do the right thing for the right thing to happen. Mm -hmm. I heard that from a guru guy, which makes a lot of sense. Which a lot of the times, sometimes we wonder why things don't go the right way. But you have to look at it. Are you doing the right things in order for the right things to happen? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the same thing you're doing, but simplified because it makes sense. Okay, so how is the uh, rap cumbia coming along? Oh, <laughs> well. Body, body. Tin, 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 tin. No, que te gusta Megan Thee Stallion, no todavía? Yeah, or who, I'm, who still, into I'm now? still into all that music. Yeah, I love. You're, the, you're the rap. I, I like rap, too. Uh, yeah, so. Old school rap. That's, yeah. That's what's hitting hard right now. Um, but maybe in the works in the future. Yeah. Right now, we want to make... Uh, English music into cumbia or into our style, and I seen yeah I started experimenting with it. The last um, live show yeah I did with Azteca Records yeah we're doing a little bit of English and Spanish mm -hmm. mix. Yeah, we took out uh, "Proud Mary," which is one of the songs on on our next album. Mm -hmm. uh, mixed it with "Mari La Orgullosa," which is uh, a cover from uh, "Banda Me Mexicanos." Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I said that right. Mandel Mexicano. Uh, yeah. Mandel Mexicano. Um, and so we we were like, why not match it together? And Where did that idea come from to try to do that? Because I know Energy Boys have done the uh, country mix with their something like crossover that. albums. Yeah, their crossovers. Yeah. And it's doing really well for them. Mm -hmm. Both both English and Spanish. Yeah, it's because it, it, it reaches a, a different type of um, audience because you got your full-on Spanish people that speak Spanish, understand Spanish and all that stuff. And we love playing uh, music that's in Spanish, but we also love, love our English music, which yeah. is something that we want to incorporate to get a, a bigger fan base. Do we have a Taylor Swift in there somewhere in the new project? In the, in the future. <laughs> Imagine. Hey, why not? They do mix um, some of the cumbias with some Taylor Swift or even Bad Bunny and mix it in with some cumbia. Okay, so tell me, how would you, like, your cumbia, 
But then there's cumbias, there's vallenato, there's, you know, depending on what kind of cumbia. So what would best describe the type of cumbia that y'all do? Uh, it's not a vallenato because it's not no, come from man. Colombia, kind of. It's more, it's, how would you say? It's a mix of cumbia. ¿Qué dice uh, Rafa? ¿Cómo sería el estilo de la cumbia que hacen? What kind of cumbia do they do? ¿Qué estilo? Como Lagunero, cum Lagunero. colombiano, uh, sonidero, norteño. We have a lot. You don't have a name for it? No, 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 no there's no name for it yeah. yet. <laughs> We're trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> there's a baby that you need to name of yeah. the things that you do, especially with the New English version uh, coming out. That would be pretty cool because you do sound like a cumbia group, but then you are able to do the wapangos too and mix that. And then you're able to do the Norteñas, too, which I mix up to make sure that you cater to everybody in, in uh, an event, especially mm -hmm. the quinceañeras that you do. So that's pretty cool. But there is a distinct sound that you still do have because there are, you have some kinds of influences yeah. that you have. So, yeah. Nathan, you need to name the baby. <laughs> uh, okay, so no, my homie Louis, Louis the Great, he's an artist here from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, I think I met him before. Um, so he does, he started to do the rap cumbia, but he's done it in English and Spanish. So if you have either need lyrics or an artist that he does his thing, and he's put out stuff, his freaking numbers are doing good on those cumbias that he's put out. Mm. Actually, he, he got a song named Cumbia with a K too, which is trippy to me. But that song is really doing really good for him. Like he's 30, 20, 30,000 views on Spotify and stuff. That's good. So, but but yeah. the mix, I think y'all y'all do a, a great job mixing together what you have as far as the English. I don't know y'all moving the English, but like the rap cumbia, mm, yeah, it'll be pretty cool. But maybe one of these days. What okay, so so pause on the cumbia rap, even though you want it, we're still working on it not yet. Okay, so your dad, Rafa Rafael Sanchez, uh, used to be with a group for a long time. You musician now, he's mostly with you all. But how come he didn't let you join his crew at that time? Or was there any kind of, no, te, no querías, you didn't want to kind of go in there? Okay. Um, you were just not no. allowed in that group. It wasn't even. It, it was all, um, I don't want to be rude or anything. Tell you, say it. Uh, Middle-aged to kind of youngish men. Uh -huh. So I was like, what, 13? That was not going to be time, a vibe. 12, 13, it was not a vibe. So I was I I would go with him to gigs whenever I uh -huh. had the opportunity to, but it was just to go watch them play. Cause apart from watching them play, I had, I really liked that music that they, yeah. that they played. That's pretty cool. But no, 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 uh, no way that you were gonna be part of that. No. <laughs> Which again, I think you're all, even though you said that it was just started gathering to play. I think in your mind. You already have ideas. I'm not saying that you orchestrated some evil, not evil plan, but it was a good plan because you're here. But you kind of sort of have in your mind something of the direction that you wanted. I just to. needed to connect the dots of everything. Yeah. yeah. And then so far where you're at as far as connecting the dots with the band. Because I think everybody sees you besides the manager as, you know, of course, the vocalist. But The head, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> um, it's... I I don't exactly know where I want to take the band, but I know where I want to get to. Mm -hmm. So I know I want for everybody to have the band as um, a stable job and like stable income because being a musician in real life in the in the industry is is really hard. Yeah. And I I see that with a lot of bands, lots of um, solo artists that we that we know. And um, right now, social media is really, really helping a lot of people. But we just we need to get into that, into that wave and all that stuff. So, what do you see it being? So, so that's the the, the where you see it at being stable with the music and being able to provide for all the people in the band, uh, as far as you know, making a, a living out of it. Mm -hmm. Nothing bigger than a, a, a household name with bigger band names that you can be com not compare, but kind of mention with like Angeles Azules or different things like that yeah Nothing like that definitely we'll grow into um, a spot up there a spot where we can uh, do collabs with um, all the other yeah. bigger artists and stuff like that 
I think maybe your dad was trying to do you a favor to stay away from the music, <laughs> from the music, music business because you may bring a, a great point because I, I see the musicians being around the gigs and stuff and it's not even as DJs and MC and it's not an easy thing to do. It's not. Like it gives a lot you give a lot of you whenever you're out there to trying to entertain the people. And then sometimes the pay is not all the way what you imagine it to be for the for the work you do. But mm -hmm. Whenever you're on stage, at least for myself, it's like, I don't know, there's nothing compared to as far as like just being there. Like, even if you don't get a penny, the feeling of being there and doing what is it, whatever it is that you're doing as far as performing. You okay over there, Kevin? Yes. You're sneezing. You're coming over there. Um, I thought I made you cry with my words. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, it's freaking awesome to be there. But you're right. It's yeah. very tough. Maybe he was trying to discourage me. <laughs> not, uh, not, not. Come on, come hey, on. If, if somebody would have warned, <laughs> warned me in the beginning, um, I would have thought about it twice. How we tell everybody now and there is like, on the stage, hey, if you want to be a musician, don't. Or how, how just you say think it? about it. Just think about it or something like that. If you if you want to be a musician, you got to be very um, careful with what you want because there are people that want to take advantage of you. Yeah. There are people that only want to be there for the money and don't want to be there to play. There are so many people that do want to play, but they just don't have the opportunity to. Or they just no se quieren poner las pilas. Um, because there's, we've, we've come across a bunch of people. I mean, the, uh, the turnover for musicians within even your band, because from the original members of your group, there's only you left? Me. Yeah. Uh, of well, the original, original, of original, 2016, original 16, just you. Mm -hmm. And you've gone through different people and different things. How does one go about trying out, or how, when do you open the opportunity to try to see if you can get a new member that, that vibes with everybody? Because whether we want it or not, we're people. And we all have different personalities. We all bring come from different backgrounds, you know. A lot of the times it's kind of hard to kind of make your own tribe of people that can get along. Mm -hmm. And even though they might be a little conflict, they can still get along and do the job. Mm -hmm. So whenever y'all open up for auditions, I don't know if you do auditions or whatever, how do you go about that process? If any, I don't know if you're hiring anymore, looking for anybody. Ooh. But Ooh. if you were, what would other criteria for anybody? Um, well, we usually, like, um, like I said, social media, is, it has been such a huge help for so many people. And mm -hmm. it's helped us get uh, different people in the band. Yeah. Um, People that have tried out in the band and didn't last that much, but they still tried it. And um, also uh, the requirements, I think it's just wanting to do something, wanting to be there playing, uh, wanting to be uh, in the music business, yeah. wanting to um, do something for yourself, basically. So... Uh but I do see that y'all do have some kind of something that y'all do because even though she wanted to per play accordion, that y'all just had her to play other stuff for the meantime until the position became open. Mm -hmm. But that also shows that she wants to do and be part of it mm -hmm. also, you know. Not, it's like they were testing you, but like are you willing to do this in order for you to further expand your career in your mu as your music, your musician, as being a musician, but willing to do the other stuff? That you have to do in order to be part of the band, you know. Yeah, um, like like I said, it's it's definitely in in that person. If they want to, they will work hard. They will dedicate themselves, even if it's not an instrument that they play. Yeah. Even if it's not an instrument that they came in to play, they still stay and and give it a chance. If the opportunity comes up. And the opportunity is there for your for you to take. Yeah. And if you don't take it, well then. I, th I was thinking the other day about something that is somebody was telling me something about they love to do something, and then they were making every excuse and not to do it. I'm like, but do you really love it? Like I think people there love things to do. Like for you or for me, for example. Like nobody, you didn't have to have a penny, but you still will be willing to play and and perform you know what i mean because you've done it plenty of times with even charity events same thing for me even though i might not be making money for this but you couldn't keep me away from doing it and i will find a way to do it still mm -hmm. like, there's no excuse that i can possibly make for myself to do it yeah. so i think it's the love of 
It's a strong word, but it really is if you wanted to do this and, and yeah, do do it. I know for sure you and I know how the other ones are because they go through some stuff in order to even perform and be on, on stage. Yeah. You know, like the practices, the long drives, the coming home early. Those things are tough. Yeah. They are um, tough. Lots of late nights, lots yeah. of days where we have to go um, without eating. Yeah. Sometimes like long, long days uh, when we went to record a couple of new videos for our new album. Yeah. Uh, we had spent from 5 a.m. traveling. Yeah. Uh, to when was it that we finished around three ish? Three or four. -ish. Three or four in the afternoon. We had to drive all the way to Houston to do this. Dang. So driving all the way to Houston, getting there uh, to the place where we were recording, um, record the videos, and then do a photo shoot. Do a photo shoot <laughs> afterwards. Oh, yeah, I do that. And then eat because we had we <sighs> hadn't eaten anything. No stops, no nothing. There was no bathroom at the place where. Mm -hmm. Where we <laughs> where we went to record, so we have to we had to go to like a, a scrub. Yeah, we had yeah, to go that, to like a Kroger. Especially y'all being girls too, then y'all have to find. <laughs> oh, y'all had to go to a Kroger's. Good. I was yeah, gonna we, say, man. <laughs> so if you want to be a musician, just remember it's not all the glamour. Which again, the feeling of being on stage is funny, freaking crazy. But you really do have to love this in order for mm -hmm. it to do it, because otherwise you won't last mm -hmm. that long. Mm -mm. You'll be on your way. Okay, so one of the interviews you gave a shout out to a lot of the grupos, and you had mentioned earlier about that, which was Los Gran Reyes, Chico Stao, Los Combers, uh, La Potencia Vallenata at that time, because all those people kind of sort of helped you and all the people that were at that time to kind of sort of give you guidance as far as those. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty much what happened? Is mm -hmm. that all the groups? And then now there's even other groups that, yeah, La Escala de la Cumbia and mm -hmm. other people that, yeah. Around, I think that's all the ones in the DFW, isn't it? Or yeah. there's more. I there's. Think more, but. Yeah, more Norteño and Sierraño, mm. but we don't we don't play that kind of that mm -hmm. kind of Sierraño music yeah. or or stuff like that, and we don't really know that many Norteño groups. Only the ones that we've like played at at like um, Corral West or or all of those other Far West and all that stuff. Just those bands that we've like shared a stage with, but other than that, those are the only uh, cumbia groups that we've worked with. Yeah, that have helped us out. And that's pretty accurate as far as all those people contributing to helping you out with different things to to get you going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you tell me about it? What was the contributions that they they gave you? I know it was something with music. I don't know if it was instruments or speakers or recording, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, Instruments, uh, learning how to play. Some, some of them did uh, give some classes to some of the other uh, band members that we used to have, nice. or we worked with them to like get better at at this music. Different things uh, contributed to the music um, music side of it, but mm -hmm. they also gave us uh, lots of constructive criticism, which is something that you have to take here when you're starting. It's yeah. either good or bad, and you have to take it how it is, but you have to take it from people that know what they're talking about. True that. Because there's a lot of Facebook and YouTube common experts that they feel like they say something, and like they have no videos whatsoever of them doing nothing. Like, yeah. shut your face up. You <laughs> Post a video and look at your face. Show your face. And then maybe you can say something. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you do have to listen, but you're right, people that know what they're doing because they've been doing it more mm -hmm. longer than you have yeah. so they know something more about you than so it's pretty awesome that you are able to open up for criticism because you do have to mm -hmm. not the facebook critics or youtube critics <laughs> hey appreciate your comments helps the algorithm but y'all go do something <laughs> post a video <laughs> that's pretty cool though so all of them helped y'all but you know what i was thinking though when i was listening to that part because i haven't seen it there's a few collabs where there's not more collabs that I feel like there should be with the Dallas or the DFW Cumbia groups. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's stopping y'all, but let me tell you something that I heard. I'm not telling y'all what to do, but I just heard and it makes sense. There was a TikTok. I'm too old for TikTok, but I'm on TikTok. So this, this lady was talking about the reggaetoneros back in the days, right? So a lot of reggaetoneros, even though they might not, not like each other, they were still collabing. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a song, jump in, do a remix, boom. I have a song, jump in, do a remix, boom. And then they did that for years. 
And now them fools have billions of views all the time, and they have their own, their own fans that rocks rock with them forever. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. It's up to y'all to do collabs, but I think for me, I felt like like damn, there's only a handful of them, but I don't know, I haven't seen like a lot more collabs. But if you see yourself as a business sentence, like solely like me as a business, then it makes sense to enter twine with other businesses yeah. like their groups to help y'all out and help them out to get bigger yeah because there's nobody else here than y'all y'all the only group cubia group so there is just just an observation mm-hmm. but have y'all talked have y'all seen because i know all y'all get along but have y'all ever discussed nobody brought it up oh yeah <laughs> whoa jugando <laughs> yeah um we have two songs on this album mm-hmm. where we collabed with uh, two of the uh, two of the grupos Potencia Vallenata and um, Scala de Cumbia, mm-hmm. and they, um, well, first Potencia Vallenata recorded uh, Corazoncito with me because they wanted me to to sing that song with their album that they were gonna take out, nice. um, and so I was like, oh, well, we're working on an album too. Why not use that same song with with us? And so yeah, that was that was the first collab that we added, That's and dope. then. Um, Te Invito a Bailar is, um, well, it's it's original, not originally, uh-huh. but it's a cover song from uh, Chicos de Barrio, which they made it into Cumbia. But we just added the English part, which is um, You're the One That I Want. So mm-hmm. it has the lyrics mixed in. And we recorded it with Scala de, de, de Cumbia. Mm-hmm. And I sang with their singer in, in um, Spanish. And then I also sing it in English with, with Adrian, yeah. their their other singer. I think you have the right idea with English and Spanish, especially with the generations the way we are. I think that's what sometimes people, like the DJ I work with, he hires me a lot because I can do both. The presentation in English and Spanish, and then later entertain the people in English and Spanish because it's kind of by default now because we can't like some of us are not so strong in English or Spanish and. Families are not, this, they're the same way. They're not mm-hmm. so, no saben mucho inglés. They don't know a lot of English. And some don't know a lot of Spanish. But once you're, like, singing and playing, you kind of sort of, like, you feel it. Either mm-hmm. way, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. So what other collabs do you have? Is that the only collabs that you have in the project with uh, the Grupos? Mm-hmm. Or is there another one? Cannot- Those are the only ones that we have. Uh, we definitely want to do... Uh, collabs with other bands from around the area, but that's just organizing uh, ourselves and, and setting yeah. a time for when we can. Hey, other bands, they want to play with y'all. <laughs> I lost my phone. Oh, sorry. Checking the time. Hey, other bands, they want to play with y'all. What y'all <laughs> waiting for? I don't know who. Get an invitation, okay? Mm-hmm. We'll saying, invite man. y'all or y'all invite us inboxes. In Sol de la Cumbia, DM. Hey, favor. y'all hit the DMs for some businesses. <laughs> y'all all businesses. Y'all can all profit. El que like, caiga. <laughs> hey, and just get it done. I, I think it would be amazing that it's crazy to me that there's only a handful of y'all. And if y'all just, y'all really can run the market as far as Cumbia for with y'all. And y'all can like literally be eating all the time here, at least here in the W. Mm-hmm. But y'all have travel, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so... Y'all were with Tengo Talento, Mucho Talento, correct? Mm -hmm. How was that experience? Uh, Different from any other experience. Was that the one that y'all went to Cali? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. um, It's it's definitely definitely a lot more different than playing on stage in front of uh, people that you don't know, but people that are there staring at you and you're just there and you're supposed to do one thing. And you're just thinking about that one thing that you're supposed to do and you overthink mm. sometimes. So how was your, how, was all y'all, did y'all get to go? Or that wasn't, uh, oh, it was only you at that time? Uh, it was us two. Yeah, what two? And how does that process, so first of all, yeah, y'all have to do original heroin, right? Or they just went straight to California? And uh, yeah, they do pre-auditions uh-huh. in, um, in Dallas. Well, they go to different cities. Yeah. And then um, from there, like a week or two, we got a call back saying that they wanted us in California mm-hmm. in like two months. And we were like, okay, well, we'll go. We'll see. Did they pay you away or you just have to make your way over there? Uh, I think they only got the, the housing for us. We, we stayed at a hotel that they 
provided for us, but, but that's it. But you still it. have to make your way. They don't mm -hmm. buy you a ticket or nothing for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, luego, then y'all get over there, and there's a lot of uh, waiting, and yeah, that's one of the times where y'all didn't get to eat for a while. Um, They actually brought in food. They did? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take it back, my bad. Yeah, yeah, but we were the last people that auditioned that Ouch. day, so that we had to That could be good or that could be bad? By the time we left, it was already dark, so we wasted yeah. all our time. We got there. there 8 in the morning, yeah. left at around 10 or 11. And yeah, the last ones. We were the last ones. Like I said, and you have to perform. Mm. And how did it go? How did the performance go? Uh, it was it was pretty good. They all they all liked us, but I guess they didn't find us interesting to put us on TV. So. Mm. So it was with the main judges, or oh, yeah, no, no, it was, it was the another. main judges. It was, it the, was main the main ones. judges. Mm. And that one didn't air. The no, didn't ours air? didn't air. Really? Mm. Damn. I wish it did. It didn't I know. Yeah. Still, hey. I guess those executives or whoever, the directors or whatever, I guess they got a vision for what they want. And sometimes they want... They want to sell. Yeah. That's, that's and then sometimes thing. you don't have to be good yeah. to sell. Sometimes you have to be the wackiest freaking person in there, you know, for you to make it the mm -hmm. next round. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's all good. There's nothing wrong with it. So, but overall, was there any criticism that y'all took from them that kind of helped y'all learn anything, really? Um, to what I remember... I think they all they all liked it, but yeah. they were all just like, "Don't be scared," because we can tell that y'all are nervous. Yeah, still shy right now. Yeah, you know how I can tell by your body language, like your hand. Like I'm not criticizing you, right? But your body language, your hands, and things like that. You know, but if you're like, you know, okay. it's just little things that they see that they know, they'll project your, like your confidence and things like that. Don't get me wrong, y'all are different people on stage, but all that of how well. It's, 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 it's like the whole package that you have to have, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have the thing on stage, mm -hmm. and then you have to be able to also move well outside of it. You know, it's, maybe they didn't see that part, but y'all still doing your thing, so, you know. But that's just some of the things that me learning in life that I can see maybe some of the things that they picked up. I'm like, maybe that's what it was. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take away the fact that y'all still really good at playing. Okay, so the... Chicago, what was our gig for? Was that something that it was an actual gig gig or an algo diferente? Was that something different? It was Come a back. celebration for um, Santa Cecilia. Do you know who that is? It's a Santa. Uh, it's a Santa Cecilia. She is um, the um, angel god representative for musicians mm. so okay. um it's la, la santa de los músicos mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay gotcha so the saint um, of the musicians yeah so it's tradition for musicians to play for her mm. uh and we got called Sorry. to a celebration uh, in her honor in, in chicago in chicago mm -hmm. and how, how was that um windy very for sure, and cold. very long cold, cold snowy uh it's definitely different than Texas. Mm -hmm. um, fourteen hour drive wasn't that bad, but it was really long. It's not twenty plus hour drive mm -hmm. to California. No, I drove twenty four hour was. I drove bad. to Cali, yeah. and it's freaking far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the way that the road drops off, like oh it's, yeah, it's freaking scary. Yeah. <laughs> but not scary to not drive ninety miles an hour like everybody's doing. But that's pretty cool. Though. But how was the uh, audience in in Chicago? Because I know for sure that in other states, in other places, they kind of like like you more, or they interact with you more, or they're more intrigued that you're from somewhere else. Did, did you feel that at all in Cali or in Chicago? Um, well, we have gotten lots of different reactions from from people uh -huh. outside of, of Texas. Yeah. Uh, but mostly the fact that they haven't seen bands with people that are younger than than 30 years old and playing the older kind Old, of music too. older music new music everything yep. so it's it's different reactions from from different people but different people but it's 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 all good you have a uh, your tiktoks is strong tiktok account y'all have quite a bit of videos that done really well for you it's almost a million on some of them do y'all don't use it a lot or do y'all don't have the tiktok account anymore uh, yeah, do right. My mom's the one that that. She's the one that runs it. Runs the TikTok account. <laughs> Was it twenty something 
K, 29K, almost 30,000. Yeah. Yeah. And then, do you ever go live? I know they pay you for that, right? Uh, sometimes my mom does put the live and she gives us a phone and we got to figure out what to do. So but. once you get 10,000 followers on TikTok, they start paying you. Like people can start contributing money. I don't know if you ever used it, but I'm shooting for 10K. I'm at three. I need more help. <laughs> but as, but it's a good tool for additional funds that is digital. There's a lot of that going on now. Mm-hmm. That apps will, as long as you go live and people like it, they start sending you stuff and you'll create your funds account, your creator account, you'll get paid. Yeah. So, And and then so, uh, I think one of the videos almost hit almost a million on one of y'all's videos. Or I think it was half a million or something like that. But it did really well for y'all. So yeah, definitely, uh, you gotta keep using that because it's doing great for you. So, what is the um, interaction as far as uh, all the other social medias? Is that your mom that runs the run? Mm-hmm. And people be weird online. You know, she's good to to do that. Okay, y'all were at uh, Premio Ski Musical Awards in two thousand and twenty one or twenty one, right? Yes. How was that experience? And who won? Nobody. Who, I didn't um, see the other follow up video. I can't get them. Well, they yeah, were nominated for sure. Yeah, they gave uh, prizes out to um, people in the community in the DFW uh, area. Yeah, that were all linked to. Um, it was um, a radio station. I can't remember the name of it, uh, but it was DF DFW based um, Dallas. Radio yeah. station, yeah, and um, it was different singers, performers, um, bands, mm-hmm. uh, also uh, internet influencers, lots of Instagram influencers, and yeah. all that stuff. Um, and I, I think we did get a prize. I can't, I can't remember. I yeah, yeah, I got a nomination said. for sure. Yeah, we got a nomination, uh, but I can't remember if we actually won the category, which was um, uh, top bands of, of Dallas Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Something like that. That's pretty cool, though. So y'all also get get to perform sometimes. So, well, f- besides performing all over the place in different venues, different clubs now here in the DFW regularly, you actually get to, y'all been, I think if I'm not mistaken, three times to Azteca Music Group Live? Yes. Mm-hmm. So three times. How did that come about? They're a big deal. I didn't realize how much of a big deal. Okay, so Azteca Music Group has La Maquinaria Norteña, La Energia Norteña, La Renor Norteña, Los Pecadores del Rio Concho, La Fiera de Oguinaga, La Alianza Norteña. They like are part of them as far as a label. That's freaking... Like, a, a huge label. And their uh, YouTube page mm-hmm. uh, is popping, popping. They mm-hmm. have like a lot of uh, subscribers. So how did that opportunity come about? Um, well, this uh, that opportunity came up a couple of years ago. I, I, want to say two years ago, three mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. Um, they were looking for a band to start off the the series because they wanted to start um, a live series of live bands coming to play at the studio that they had Yeah. Uh, at one of their headquarters. And they were like, if y'all are available on Thursday, why not just just come in and play for us for an hour? Yeah. We were like, okay, that's cool. Like, we didn't know, we didn't think anything of it. And then whenever the day came, um, we just, we were kind of like, um, sacados de onda, because we didn't know, we didn't know what was going on. It was our first time, Mm -hmm. uh, playing live, uh, in front of cameras and we didn't know, they didn't know what they were doing and we didn't know what we were doing. So it was kind of a, um, a rocky start, but it was, it was good. Yeah, how was the uh, feedback and then response as far as like, was there any bookings that came out of it or whatsoever? Yeah, um, yeah. lots of people um, l- look look us up on YouTube and they find those videos mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, I saw you on Azteca Live, like, um, really? I like how y'all play and all that stuff, and they they have called us from there, yeah. so it it works out. How did you like how did you like pl- uh, playing for them as far as your experience? Um. It was, it wasn't really that different. What made me nervous were the cameras because I'm not. The cameras and the lights. Uh, mm-hmm. The cameras, lights, and um, well, being in front of uh, people that work with Azteca, well, they're a huge label, mm-hmm. and I, and I want to give them something that they they want to they want to look at, they want to sell. Um, so it it was definitely having to 
put my best out there, yeah. even if it's us not getting paid, and even if it's if it's just for prom promotional, promotional. Yeah. stuff. How about you? Were you part of it? Did you pay for any of those gigs? How did you feel? Yes. How did um, you like it? I was excited because really? I'm like I said, I'm a big fan of those groups. Yeah. And that type of music. So once I found out we were going to Azteca to record, I was kind of shocked. Like, us? But like, did you know that who the label represents? Yes. Really? Yes, I did. Wow. And I was I was happy because I was like, oh, I, I'm gonna get to see like where all these other groups going, and you know. Um, and like Monica said, it was kind of scary because the cameras are so close to you and it's so many cameras and then it gets hot in there. It was, it was a little bit of a struggle, but we got through it. Yeah. What about you? Did you get to play too? Yes, I, mean? I did. How did you like it? How, I like, how I mean, I'm always in the back, so uh -huh. I really don't be talking that much. That's the good thing, cause if I be tagging I, on the mic though. Oh, I do. I have an inner count, bro. Yeah. I be. He's the one that making that tells them laugh and everything. Yeah. The jokes. You be telling, oh, tell me your joke. I be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> now you shy on the. No, spot. it's not that. It's not that. It's, oh, they're not. Uh, they're, they're, they're not a pro. Friendly. Yeah, they're He's like, get on rated the R. At the same time. They're rated R. I'm the class clown of the group. We're gonna keep it PG. Yeah, PG thirteen. But, uh, yeah. So uh, how old are y'all? So now. Because when y'all started, y'all were 16, 15. So how old are you? You started not that long ago. So how old are y'all now? If, uh, if, if it's okay. That's fine. Uh, I'm 21 You're now. You're 21 now. I'm 17. You're 17. I'm 22. You're 22. That's still babies, though. Yep. That's still freaking babies, and that's crazy. Y'all have almost six years, you. You're like 10 years almost. Um, More 10 years than less, but it's crazy. Okay, we're running short on time, but before we let y'all go, uh, tell me all your social media. Where can they find you at? Uh, where can they people book you? Um, what will be the best number, the best contact? All right, y'all can book us for any uh, social event, anything. Literally, we will go. Uh, y'all just got to call 940-300-1826. Get in contact with Luz. She's our manager. She's La Mera Mera. She's the real deal, Sol de la Cumbia. Um, our social media, we got all types of social media. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, uh, TikTok, Sol de la Cumbia, SDLK on all digital platforms, as well as Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, and uh, also Pandora. Yeah. So Awesome. The, uh, yeah, it's, uh, YouTube is freaking awesome. Like yo, You have a lot of live performances that you do that you uh, record the gigs and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and you know it does very well for y'all. And then a lot of people find that some of the songs that you have put, because I went through some of their comments, so like, like, who's here from TikTok? And they'll be like, oh, somebody was over here from TikTok. Mm. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so the new project, one more time, remind me of the name. Uh, February 10 is when it's going to come out. Uh, ¿Otra vez el nombre? Y te llegó el sabor. Y te llegó el sabor. And then merch. Do you have any merch online? Do you have any merch on deck? I know you have shirts right now, but anything in the works? Um, we don't have any merch online, mm -hmm. but, um, if people want to buy like a t-shirt, we also have mugs. Um, our, our album is also, um, something that we, we carry and, and we also sell. Um, they can just send us a, a DM on, on Facebook or Instagram anywhere, uh, to be honest, and we can, um, mail it out to them. Awesome. Okay. So if you want some merchandise, hit them up on the DMs, Strictly Business. And uh, get you mugs, shirts, and then the, not this one, the new one coming out. Can't wait. Do you have the are, are, are they uh, art done? The artwork? Mm, not yet. So, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Let me sure I get that. <laughs> so, because I want it. If you get it before uh, in the next two weeks, let me know. We also have hats if y'all are interested. Oh, yeah, hats have too. For the guys. <laughs> yeah. For the dads and everybody. Okay. So, shout outs. Any shout outs you have? It's almost going, Sasha, and then we'll make our way that way. Um,. A shout out to my family, La Familia Landa, La Familia Lopez in San Luis Potosí. Um, they, since they're always supporting me, so I'd like to thank them a lot. Awesome. How about yourself, Monica? Uh, I un saludo pa mi racita chilanga. Um, yeah. Shout out to my family that are that are watching. They also watch from Mexico. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm, my dad's from El Defe. 
Really? I'm not from the DF. I'm from a little town, Morelos. Oh. But my family, I have I have family in the DF. I have family. Y Kevin, um, shout out to Akin. Shout out to... What do they call you, Chicle? Because me pego a todo. Okay, okay. All right. That's shout why. out. Continua. Um, <laughs> um, shout out to my family that they be watching too. My little brother that always be texting on the comments. Always be seeing him. Awesome. Can't wait um, for your comments, homie. I know. And... um. The boys. Shout out to the boys. The boys? Who the boys? The cowboys? No. Oh, just the boys? <laughs> <No. up there? laughs> Is that your group? Is that your crew? Your, the, the boys. boys? Okay, just the okay. boys. That doesn't mean the cowboys. Uh, <laughs> you got the blue and the white. Okay. The uh, uh, Y'all are young, but I just want to get y- y'all, uh, because y'all been through this, y'all walked this path, and I think that uh, you still have something that y'all learned. So what is something that you learned in the music business for all y'all that you would tell your younger self that would help somebody. We're going to start in Kevin this time mm. and make it work this way. No tiempo para pensar. Yeah, you thought like, I'm going to get time Dang. to think. Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> tell me a lesson that you have learned in the music business that you would tell your younger self that love, would help somebody else. Love it. Because if you don't or you don't find a passion to it, then what's the point of you being in it and if you don't find a passion or if you don't like it awesome you know? i like it i like it. and plus it's tough it's tough yeah. it's not easy it's not a easy road okay you monica um be more confident it helps even if you don't know how to be confident it's just thinking being in the in the state of mind where you think you're confident but set the side solita yeah you have to um you have to dig deep to be able to do that. Like, I was talking to um, a person that deals with a lot of artists, and I was telling her a lot of the times, the artist, it's not just like the music part, right? It's, it's super important to have that, right? Mm-hmm. But some of the time, you notice some of the people that are, I'm not saying you're not talented, but in general speaking, some of the people that are bigger, they're not really much different than anybody else, but they do all the other stuff, which is, you know, get attention. Mm-hmm. That helps them push that. So it's, sometimes it's not even the music itself and then that and then later on people get directed towards the music too so you have to do all kinds of stuff too and then you're right you have to project that otherwise you have to really believe what you're doing mm-hmm. and sell it to people in order for them to believe that to you, believe you can you. do that you mm-hmm. know you such a um i would have to say like go for it don't be scared um because that's a big problem i had i was kind of scared to like step up and do new things so i say go for it and yeah. also say bye to your friends because <laughs> it gets like you're in the music industry and it's like you're kind of like there 24 7 so your world doesn't revolve around you anymore basically it's around music the music, mm-hmm. music. okay so this was going to be you are young but i hope that that y'all good with the question. Uh, and I'm, hopefully it can do something for y'all. So I usually wake up with a saying that I got from this person uh, that I check out online. He's like an Indian guru or whatever you believe. But it, usually he's, he says, uh, I'm not immortal. I am mortal and I will die one day. And that's just, just going to happen, right? We don't want to go, but it's going to happen. And that's just to make you realize that you are mortal. We're not here for a long time. We're here for, might seem like a short time, independent. But... With that question, I want to say, if people were at your funeral, what do you want the uh, people to feel about your life? We're going to start with Monica, and then we'll go to Sasha. Uh, that one's deep. It's yeah. whatever comes to mind. That's a thinker. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think what I want them to feel is feel like um, I'm I'm not... I don't know, and that's a really hard. That's a really hard question. Yeah. A really good one. I haven't heard that one. Um, I definitely want to feel like I did something for people. I I want my my memory to to linger. I want people to remember the way that I sang, the way that I was, um, and I don't, I don't know. That was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was beautiful. Uh, what about Sasha? We're gonna go with you, and then we'll go with. Um, I want people to, I guess you could say, like, be happy because I want, 
I want I want them to be happy because I was happy because of everything I got to accomplish and I want them to remember all the good things that happened, you know? Yeah. Everything good. Love it. What about yourself, um, Kevin? I mean, I always say this. I mean, I would think if they went to my funeral, if I passed away, mm -hmm. I would just remember it because I always had, a, like, a, not a quote, but I always said, if you're happy, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So it just, if you're, I mean, I know I'm not here, but I know something about me is going to be here to remind you that, you know, that I'm. Yeah. It's crazy that I I have this question, but you had thought about that question too. Even though you are young, you know, I'm not trying to scare you. I don't know if it got a little emotional for you, mm -hmm. but I think it's important to realize those things to be able to keep pushing forward. I don't know, if, I don't think you're in the breaking point or anything. But if you ever question if you should go in, you know, then you should know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's lighten up the mood because that one was tough. <laughs> but I like the I like what you were doing. What you said is very important because you. I helped uh, me, especially when I'm booking for a nonprofit event helping childhood cancer. Not only an event that I was part of, but you have, uh, and the whole group has uh, always helped out with different events. Uh, nonprofits, y'all jump, whether y'all, I don't even know if y'all know the details, if people are taking any money or not. I know for personally, the, the event that I was throwing, there was no money for me whatsoever. It was for the families affected by childhood cancer. But I know for sure that y'all really sometimes... Maybe not so much now, but in the beginning and still whenever y'all can, y'all help a lot in the community to do events nonprofit whenever they ask, hey, and even if they don't have like a major setup or production, y'all still go up there and show up and jam out. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's super important. And, and not to mention, from starting, like knowing how hard it is to be a musician at 16, like to be able to even play multiple <sighs> instruments, and some of y'all really do. And to continue doing it, even though you know it's super tough, and sometimes even the reward doesn't really necessarily match the sacrifice that you have to do, I think it's amazing. So, so that La Cumbia, you are definitely a global Latin factor. Appreciate y'all being here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And one last question, because I'm full of questions, but I'm right now today. Many years from now, if anybody was to Google y'all or search you in some kind of search engine, what do you hope from them to find about y'all? Or individually, or about Sol de la Cumbia? I'm going to start with you. Um, well, I hope I come out with, like, new projects in the future, like, that'll impact me. Um, but I also hope I'm still tagging along with them. <laughs> um, and I hope they also see, like, old videos of me when I started, because my music teacher has a lot of them up. And it's, it's funny to look back at them and see yeah. how it all started. You'll feature with Taylor Swift. We'll <laughs> Hey, what about you, Monica? Um, I hope they find um, well the legacy. Um, hopefully, I'm still doing this. Hopefully, uh, by that time we're a lot we're a lot bigger. Um, but if not, well, um, hopefully they find me doing something that I'm also passionate passionate about. Awesome, and Kevin. Um. Well, same here with just, not just me in general, but with everybody. I want to just keep going with them mm -hmm. and just keep playing because without, well, to me, without them, just, it's not, it's not how it is or how, the way I see it, just the way we are now, the mm -hmm. people that we are now, mm -hmm. it's really, I see it as a blessing how the people came in. It's really, I like the people that are here now. So, yeah. I mean, seeing the people that are now, or over the years, I hope they they still are here. Awesome. And I think it was the lady from uh, Denton Vibes, uh, that radio station y'all had, where she was saying, even though at that time it changed from the group then to now, but she did say something very important, which I think she saw, and the same thing that I'm seeing whenever I seen y'all from the first time, how young y'all were. And I think if it's not, if I'm not mistaken, it was two, 2019 when I had first seen y'all on stage. Well, seen minimum you. I think you were there. I don't know if y'all was there, but it makes sense. If, like you said, if y'all keep doing the right thing and continue to play, something will happen. Something will give. It has to by default. It's like law in life. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't wait for uh, good luck and everything y'all do. The project. Uh, let me know anything that I, I'm able to do. But I, I, I can't wait to see if y'all consistent with whatever it is that y'all do. Man, the things that y'all can get. 
because I think the same thing that she was trying to get at and the same thing that I'm trying to get at as far as like, it's kind of obvious, but it's not obvious. But if you look at it, you see where you're going to be headed. And y'all were young at, you were young at that time whenever y'all were talking. And now many years from now, even getting better with hours that you put in. I mean, who knows where you're going to be if you yeah, keep at it. So, And I'm glad that there's a lot of changing within the band groups, but I'm glad you yeah, yeah, have a solid crew that you know can, can take you further. So definitely. I appreciate y'all being here very much. Thank you. This was another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Remember, we are just like you. We are the spice in this melting pot. That it is the world. Till next time. Thank you. Thank you very much for checking out another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. You are very important and it means a lot to us whenever you go and subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notifications whenever we have new episodes. It really does truly mean a lot to us. Thank you very much. Like a pedo, but in fact, it's a flamingo coming to Havana and from Puerto Rico on a pirate ship. He don't know where do we go. The birds of the jungle chasing fortune and fame, but one.